Hey guys, Super Bro Mike here, and in today's Bendy and the Ink Machine video, we take a look at a theory many of you have been asking for, an explanation for the giant hand that appears during the boat ride in Bendy Chapter 5. What exactly is this giant hand, and who does it belong to? Why does it appear in the game at all, and why only in this one specific area? Well, I hope to answer all of these questions in the video today, so sit back, relax, and let's do this. To begin with, let us take a look at the appearance of the giant hand itself. At a first glance, it appears to belong to Bendy himself, as it features the same four digits and trademark yellow glove. However, the hand and arm are covered in boils and growths, as well as veins that stretch across the surface of the glove. This suggests the hand is a separate entity, and one that has mutated from the ink itself. While we do see Bendy transform during the final moments of the game into Beast Bendy, a nightmarish and super powerful version of his former self, this doesn't suggest Bendy has the ability to transform throughout the game and I wouldn't correlate this late game metamorphosis with that of a giant hand living below the ink. If Bendy could have become this powerful early on in the game, then why would he change back to his previous state, only to transform again later? So this hand is unlikely to belong to any other character in the game, and so we should assume it is a separate entity trying to stop Henry as he makes his way to the giant projector within the ink machine to roll the last reel and end everything. It is interesting to note that we only see this giant hand at the very bottom of the studio, on the same floor as the giant ink machine controlling everything. We have previously theorised that this giant ink machine is the device sorting through all of Joey Drew's twisted ideas and projecting them into reality within this cartoon nightmare. What's interesting is how we see certain designs, such as Chester, the killer treasure chest from Bendy in Nightmare Run, washed up around the river suggesting that perhaps there is some kind of toxic runoff from the ink machine similar to toxic waste from a factory in the real world. This waste comes in the form of Joey Drew's many rejected concepts. We see some of these on his desk within his apartment after escaping the ink machine world, and some of these ideas are likely contaminated by Joey's twisted personality. His greed, manipulation and determination to steal the creativity of others embodied in toxic waste, pouring out of the giant projector controlling this world and into the inky river below the studio. Giving birth to nightmarish enemies such as the giant hand which only exist to destroy others, much like Joey did in the real world while running his animation studio. Joey is a man of ideas. When I agreed to start this whole thing with him, I thought there'd be a little more give and take. Instead, I give, and he takes. We have heard both Alison and Alice Angel referring to this inky abyss before. Alison mentions how characters in this world are born from the ink with little memory, but cannot step back into it without being consumed once again. One minute, we don't even exist. Just... thoughts. And the next minute this place. But you don't want to touch the ink for too long. It can claim you. Pull you back." While Alice referred to it as a screaming well of voices. So this hand shouldn't be able to move around so freely within the ink, right? Well, as previously mentioned, the hand is not a physical being in the same way as a character such as Alice, Boris, or even Bendy himself. Rather, it is an embodiment of all the wickedness Joey stood for and the terrifying nature of his out-of-control creativity. His dreams that grew too big and started to destroy the lives of the people around him. There is no monster attached to this hand. It is just a hand, one that has been created by the toxic waste of Joey's mind that has run out of the ink machine and into the poisoned river. Hence its mutated look and the fact we never see anything more of the creature attached to it. At least, that's my theory. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below.
Okay guys, well I thought we'd do something a little bit differently today. I thought at the end of this theory we'd just play through the section of chapter 5 with the giant hand. And basically, we'll take care of search searcher first. I'm recording this as I'm playing. And basically I'll walk you through the theory and what I kind of meant with, what, with everything I was saying. Because I thought this would be an interesting way to try expanding on theories and incorporating some gameplay, some live gameplay into it so to speak. You can see uh, there we've got Tom and Allison heading off down the river on their little uh, sort of boat. And obviously we're going to take one now too. Now, this was the river that I was talking about when I mentioned how I feel like, you know, it was Joey Drew's sort of thoughts all being sort of fed out of the ink machine into this inky river and things are born out of it. So I think below the surface of this ink is all like the toxicity of Joey's mind, all his like sort of wicked thoughts and his unused ideas bubbling up and they can manifest themselves in different ways, such as the giant hand, but they manifest them themselves in evil ways. Like Joey's personality, you know, sort of, the hand is trying to drag us down because that's what Joey did to so many people throughout the studio, uh, you know, over the years, which ended up in him even using the souls of his old employees to sort of bring his creations to life. So I think that's what the hand represents. I'm also just going to touch on how much I liked this section when I first played it. It's so tense, you're almost always getting captured by this hand. Obviously, as you head down river here, and you're having to like dislodge the, uh, the uh, ink from the paddle of your boat to keep it going. But I think it was just such a scary moment. I think we all expected something scary in Chapter 5 in this ink river. But we weren't expecting a giant hand, were we? And you can see it in a minute. It should pop up, I think, if we look over here. Sounds like something stuck in the paddle wheel. Yeah, we go, it's something stuck in the paddle wheel, but look. First, we see the giant hand, and you can see it's all mutated, like I was talking about. Like it's got those veins and those warts and those boils all over it. And there you go, it's just taken the whole thing down. So now we've got to dislodge our paddle and get going, because otherwise the hand will get us. So let's keep going down the river. But yeah, guys, uh, basically, this river is everything that Joey didn't use when he brought his creations to life. It's his unused ideas below the surface of the ink is what I think. The waste that ran off from the ink machine, like pollution almost. And it's kind of created these horrendous things like this giant hand you can see there. I better get moving again. Here we go. That was a close one, I think. But yeah, this section of the game is really cool. And I think there's been a lot of people asking me about the hand. Uh, it's why I did the theory today. So many people were asking, like, what is this giant hand? Why is it in the game? Who does it belong to? Is it part of Bendy himself? And like I was saying, I don't think it is part of Bendy. I think it's literally just a hand that symbolizes everything I basically spoke about in the theory just now. Uh, we hear both Alison and Alice mention about how stuff is living below the surface of the ink. They even uh, almost got dragged down themselves, and I think this is just what the hand represents, the ink itself dragging people down, um, you know, into the depths. So, yeah, hopefully this theory today has been good for you guys, and it's cleared up uh, kind of a lot of things that you were asking about. I'm going to probably try and do this on shorter theories, as I say, where I play through the section of the game that I'm talking about. It basically pads out the video. Um, because it's not really a good idea for a YouTuber to make a video less than 10 minutes these days, um, if they can help it. Not for your uh, algorithm at least. So you always want to make a 10 minute video. So I thought the way to do that would be to put something in like this, so that I can actually, you know, elaborate on what I was talking about in the theory, but more like in a sort of freestyle way while I play the section of the game. And hopefully you guys enjoy this. Let me know if you do. If you don't, I'll uh, try and think up some uh, new way of doing this. But I just figured today it would be fun to do this. And hopefully you're happy with my answers to the giant hand theory now. I think we've made it, but I think that's the end of the section. We're moving now, as you can see, into the sort of uh, Lost Ones little uh, shantytown area. It was a really cool moment, of course, when we came out and saw this for the first time. And obviously so you guys sometimes have some interesting ideas and things that I might not have thought of covering before. So if you do have some kind of theory you'd like me to look at, I can have a look. But obviously I'm not going to tackle everything you guys ask me to because sometimes these theories um, that you'll ask for, I just feel like they don't really need to be covered. I would like to do another one on Sammy Lawrence. He's obviously behind the boards there. So that's a potential uh, theory idea there. 
But thanks for watching today, guys. I hope you did enjoy this video. I hope you've had enough of a theory about the hand now. Uh, I've covered it. You've been asking for ages, so it's finally done. And hopefully you'll have a great day. Thanks for watching today. Remember, if you have enjoyed the video, give it a like. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. And I will see you guys on the next video.